I'm talking about. What I want to know is where are we really? I mean, I know, you know, witness lists look one way before the trial and who you end up calling oftentimes ends up being something different. I know this is a multi-count indictment. I know that there are a lot of defendants involved in a, several different incidents. Um, but, and I don't expect this right now, but I would like from everybody to the extent the defense knows whether they're going to present a case or not, um, a realistic list of witnesses, maybe like what counts they go to and what you expect those witnesses to say generally, broadly. Um, because this case has been going on for a really long time. And there is a rule that lets me exclude cumulative evidence. And I might end up using that. So how about y'all give me a heads up on all of that, okay? And um, if that is something that y'all could have to me by next Friday for everybody, that would be great. Uh, let's see what's next on my list. Um, with regard to kind of just general scheduling, um, other than the week of the 29th, and then I was told I think Monday through Thursday of August 19th through 22nd, is anybody aware of time that has already been given to the jury as you're out of court this week. You have this week free. No? Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> does any attorney right now know of a date that nobody from your team can be here? And I wouldn't expect that to be the case because y'all are in trial, but no. I mean, anybody getting married? Okay. Um, so I hesitate to even say the next thing I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, the little bit I have seen about this case, it definitely has appeared that there have been times that tempers have flared a whole lot and that people have been maybe less than professional. Um, and I hope that this kind of breather has given everybody a breather. And everybody has been absolutely wonderful here today. But I would like for us to maintain a degree of decorum and dignity and professionalism that is what is really expected of all of us as members of the bar. Um, I don't want to have to say anything beyond that, okay? But if, if, if it gets to a point where I think that is not being carried out appropriately, we're going to all have to talk, okay? All right. Um, all right, what else do y'all think that I need to be thinking about or do we need to be talking about or at least raising to talk about later? And anything from the state? Your Honor, I believe that the court has uh, sufficiently addressed everything that we had anticipated we needed to address with the court. Okay. Now. All right. Um, Mr. Weinstein? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Mr. Sharp, anything? Um, there have been, this case, as you know, is, is enormous and the discovery is enormous. There are certain, with Judge Glamba, we, we have some general rulings about some matters, but not particulars. Okay. I'm trying to put, give a heads up, this is an example, but I don't think it's Situation. I have filed a motion regarding there was a wiretap in this case. Okay. And, um, and the judge uh, overruled my objections and, and, and stated that the state, the, the wiretap was the, he made that finding. 
However, there are other issues about the wiretap and the particular things said in the wiretap. Some of those um, pieces of communication may be admissible, may not on an individual basis. C certain things like that, I'm just giving the court a heads up, have not been parsed through to the particulars. Okay. And, and we've discussed like the need to do those things and some of those things we kind of kicked down the kick the can down the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they're still outstanding. Okay. I just wanted to bring it to you. All right. So maybe when everybody is putting their lists of witnesses and what they're generally gonna be talking about together, they could also I don't know what happened to my mic all of a sudden. They could also include if there's any kind of either voluminous evidence, video evidence, audio evidence that we need to be considering admissibility of before the witness testifies. If y'all can maybe list out for everybody what that is, um, because yes, I absolutely want those things to have been determined before, you know, Witness Smith gets on the stand and we have 18 hours of some kind of video statement that nobody's thought about yet. Um, I, I'm, I'd like to say I'm sure that all of the evidence has been exchanged by now. Would I be correct in saying that? <laughs> we are, there's, there's reports that we're still missing. Um, the state has said that they don't have those reports. Officers have testified that they wrote the reports. Okay. And we're still missing them. All right. That's been a recurring thing. All right. If if everybody wants to detail anything that they think is missing, and I'll hear from the state on whether it is either missing, about to show up, or does not exist, um, that'll be something we can take up substantively. Um, just so we start out all on the same page. That'll be something maybe we can, y'all can do next week and we'll take up the week after that as well. Um, okay. Cause yeah, if, if we need like five days of motions in limine, we need to do that. Okay. Judge, um, I just want to make clear that the state has complied with its discovery obligations that we have turned over. All of the discovery that uh, exists in this case. And as the court is aware, discovery is that which we have in, so we have turned that over and we've actually gotten and requested, we've sought from outside our office any other materials um, that existed in the universe. We will do as the court has instructed and provide to the court a list of matters we believe have been unaddressed still um, as they pertain to our requests okay. for reciprocal discovery. Okay. Um, and uh, Mr. Shard, I know you've been in my courtroom before and typically I have, you know, one side or the other list out specifically what they think is missing and we inquire about it and try to get to the bottom of it. So that's what we will do. Y'all make up the list and then we will, we will do that. We'll actually go through it in detail so that everybody knows what's going on and we all are on the same page. All right. Um, and y'all, for any evidence that there hasn't been a ruling on yet that I'm going to need to consider the admissibility of, I obviously am going to need a copy of that. So if I've got five hours of some audio to listen to, I don't want to listen to that in court. I want to listen to that beforehand so that I know what we're talking about before we get to court to hash it out. So get me all of that as well. And that'll be more homework for me to do. Okay. All right. Then, oh, so let's like, go through um, anything, um, either Mr. Williams or Ms. Abashi for, for your client. Okay. Mr. Harvey, Mr. Steele. No, not okay. on your All right. Okay. The next thing I want to raise, and I have no idea what has happened before now, but um, I would like to encourage everybody um, while we are kind of in this pause to talk to each other 
about whether there are any plea negotiations that might be fruitful, um, whether uh, there is any room for movement by anybody on anything, um, any plea. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to entertain any kind of plea at any time. Um, it can be a joint recommendation. It will be non-negotiated um, since we're in the middle of a trial, um, but it can certainly be a joint recommendation or it can be state wants this, defense wants that, or it can be we all want to keep going with this trial. I'm here to do, I am here to give everybody a fair trial and everybody a fair shake, follow the law. Um, but I invite during this pause, uh, if y'all want to think about that and talk about that, now would be a good time to do that. Okay. All right, so um, I think that y'all have a lot to do and I have a lot to do and we will plan to get all of our filings and all of our responses in before the end of next week at the dates that I had um, provided. And why don't we plan to maybe not Monday, but Tuesday the 30th. Um, I'll convene here at 8.45 and just start tackling everything that got filed, okay? And we'll plan to go pretty much all day until we finish every day that week. And by the end of the week, I'll know whether we are at a spot to bring a jury in or whether we need another week. All right, anything else from anybody? I have a question. Yes. Yes. The court instructed that we provide the court with evidence for which there may be admissibility issues. Yes. I wanted to ask for the court's clarification if that meant um, whether there have been prior motions to suppress filed or if the court is instructing that notwithstanding the absence of a motion to suppress on a particular piece of evidence, that we are now um, going to be entertaining motions to suppress. For instance, if there's a recording that we have turned over, um, will, will the court be entertaining motions to? So I don't really know what the expectation has been. Um, I mean, if this had been my trial from the get-go, we'd have litigated all the motions to suppress by now. Motions to suppress shouldn't really be getting filed mid-trial. Um, that being said, I would rather, if somebody is going to stand up and say this is 100% unconstitutional for X, Y, and Z reasons, I shouldn't be letting in something that's constitution unconstitutional for X, Y, and Z reasons. So I'd like to know it, but I, I mean, I want it to be a legitimate, valid concern evidentially, constitutionally. I don't want it to be, you know, here's my chance to challenge everything under the sun. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but it, you know, it sounds like there are, there, there are chunks of evidence that everybody has just basically not gotten to yet. And y'all have sort of said, all right, we'll get to that when we get to this witness. And if, if y'all have been operating on a kind of rolling, all right, when we get to this witness, we'll deal with that evidence. Then I don't, ex if that's what the expectation has been, then I wouldn't expect y'all to have all filed all of your challenges. I, I don't know what's been going on. Your Honor, that has not been the case. <laughs> no, but because of the way that the court um, indicated um, that uh, the court wanted parties to provide um, evidence regarding admissibility issues, I just wanted to make certain that I understood um, what the court was instructing. Um, there have been evidentiary issues um, that I believe the, the parties disagree on, the state disagrees with um, counsel for defendants interpretation of what is right and what is valid for contesting at a particular moment. Um, I don't doubt those will continue to arise, but I was asking as it pertains to what the court uh, instructed just 
a second ago regarding evidence. I didn't know whether the court was doing something different than what I did. Okay, so I'm, I don't intend to revisit rulings on evidence that's already come in. Um, but for evidence that we know is out there and was going to be introduced a month from now with, you know, witness Jones, if y'all been doing that on a rolling basis and y'all know that there are going to be evidentiary issues with it, things that I would have considered motions in limine, then I want us to all go ahead and voice that now and sort it out so that we know when the witness shows up, what can be talked about and what can't be. And I don't know if that gave you clarification. Okay. All right. Ms. Abbasi. Yes, Your Honor. If I may, I would have to disagree with Ms. Love that it's been going along that we've already had motions about what is and is not permissible. Um, just to propound on kind of what your, your Honor was mentioning and what the task of defense faces, we have a disk of 8,000 jail calls. We are, haven't listened to 8,000 jail calls, and I think probably all the majority of them are not relevant. Everyone would agree that they're not relevant. The state's not actually going to introduce all of those jail calls. However, defense, our burden, if we don't raise the objection, it's been waived, and then it comes in at trial. Okay, so um, that's why the witness lists with what this is relevant to and what evidence is going to be used is going to be, I hope, very helpful in giving us all a better kind of groundwork. Yes, Your Honor, that, that is precisely what I'm asking. Okay. 20,000 pages of Instagram, it's going to be these ones. I just... Okay. Okay. And Judge, yes, sir, Mr. Adams. Good afternoon. Again, Judge Keith Adams with Mr. Steele for Mr. Williams. Just, just to, I think the court wanted to know um, if there are things that Judge Glanville had been doing in regards to that particular issue. And I, I did want to um, just append to what Mr. Bob was saying. Um, for example, there have been jail calls, there are interviews, that generally speaking, there have been um, hearings on the admissibility of those statements. Okay. Uh, but the court has oftentimes said, um, I agree that, for example, this statement may be admissible, but there may be some things in the statement um, that's objectionable. Sure. And we'll deal with that okay. at that time. The court has, has routinely been doing that. So not necessarily kicking the can down the road, but, but uh, addressing issues as they come up. And the court okay. has, has um, um, urged both sides uh, in advance of that issue coming up. If we can get together and iron some things out, let's do it. We've been working to do that, but there have been routinely uh, times where we simply just disagree and we've had to take those items up. And, and I think he, what you would have would like, what uh, Judge Landfill has asked, is that let's let you know about it um, as far in advance as we can. And that way you can, you can set aside some time to deal with it without impending on the juries. Absolutely. I mean, that is, we, we, I want to be respectful and cognizant of the jury's time. I also want y'all to all know what to expect to the extent you can um, and litigate everything that we can litigate beforehand, beforehand, if it's going to be necessary. Now, if there's some totally irrelevant Instagram post and the state knows they're not going to use it, but they listed it a million years ago, their updated list that they're going to share with everybody should not include the Instagram post that they know they're not going to use. So, all right. So I will expect whatever filings y'all, I will anxiously anticipate all of them. <laughs>